back. Our last review today is HBO's True Detective, and we gave it a little bit of extra time. Premiering on January 12, this limited series was created by Nick Pizzolatto and directed by Kerry Fukunaga. If you haven't seen Sin Nobre, you might like it. It stars Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson as two detectives investigating a strange murder in Louisiana. Alan, we've seen director, uh, directors, we've seen detectives investigating strange murders an awful lot in the past year. Does True Detective stand out? Oh God, yes. This is, uh, we've seen four of these eight episodes. They are incredible, uh, thanks in large part to the work that McConaughey and Harrelson are doing. But also, I mean, again, this is covering very familiar ground. There's a lot of talk of serial killers and profiling, but just the, the specificity given to these characters, to this world, the dialogue that Pizzolatto churns out, the, the way that Carrie Fukunaga shoots these Louisiana settings, and the structure they have, where half of the show is set in 1995 and then narrated by the two characters uh, in 2012. Really interesting, and I cannot overstate enough just how great the two actors are, especially McConaughey. He is going to win every single award for which he is eligible in the next year. I agree with you completely. And it, he sort of has the advantage of playing conspicuously against type here. He's playing sort of the dark, brooding, introspective one of the two detectives. And you have Woody Harrelson as the more flamboyant one. And I think that because we're so used to Matthew McConaughey doing the more flamboyant thing, seeing him go dark and inward, you know, it, it, it feels different in a way that Woody Harrelson, who I think is also doing absolutely terrific work, I think that in a vacuum, you would look at what Woody Harrelson was doing here and say that it was, you know, as good as anything he's really ever done in his career. But instead, we're talking about Matthew McConaughey because for whatever reason, you're drawn to him. And I think that he is really, really terrific. And he's really just in a, a great, great moment of his career at, at this point. And this just progresses his momentum, I think. I mean, I think that uh, McConaughey also just, he has the flashier part of the two. Yes, it's dark and it's introspective, but he is given all, he's given the tragic backstory. He's given all the weird ticks all of the really colorful monologues and turns of phrase to do, whereas Woody is playing the guy who presents himself as more straightforward, even as over the course of time you discover that he's darker and more complicated than that. But I mean, just you watch some of those scenes that they do, especially in the 2012 stuff, where it's just the camera sitting on Matthew McConaughey's face as he gives a speech about life or death or philosophy or what, whatever weird theory he has at the moment. And I was just like mesmerized by all of it. Okay, now, there is a lot of speechifying in this show, and there are a lot of people discussing very explicitly the themes that are being explored in this world. At any point did you feel like the dialogue was too portentous? In the first episode I did, I remember I even made a note at one point after one of the McConaughey speeches where I said, do I really want to watch seven more hours of McConaughey talking like this? And I, at a certain point, whether it was later in that episode or in the ensuing ones, uh, my opinion turned, it really works for the character, it works for the way that Pizzolatto and Fukunaga are telling the story. Uh, yes, no, it is not subtle in any way, but it's really very effective, uh, the way it's deployed and the way that these two men are performing it. I think that it fits with sort of the hard-boiled, um, the hard-boiled everything of this. You know, your basic, your basic noir hero with voiceovers and whatnot, there's a lot of articulating of theme in that as well. This is not noir, but it is, however, I would, I mean, what I compare this to is it's sort of Zodiac meets Hannibal only in the bayou. And so, you know, that to me sounds like something I would absolutely watch. It's very much about process. It's about the way that a job can wear a person down and torture a person's soul. It's about, you know, it's about what it means to live in a world where all you're doing each day is looking at autopsy photos, is looking to find out who the next victim would be and what that can do to your soul. And so, yeah, people talk about exactly what they're thinking about in this. And for the most part, it didn't bother me. But I can see how some people are going to feel as if there's a lot of underlining going on here, probably. We have not talked at all about the third uh, movie star appearing in this. That's Michelle Monaghan. She plays Woody Harrelson's wife. Uh, I was not necessarily a fan of that character. It seems sort of the same thankless, nagging wife role that you get in a lot of these things. How did you feel? I felt like Michelle Monaghan was doing maybe better work than necessarily the character required. Um, yes, the character is a stock character, 
but I think there's as much interest in the relationship that she develops with the Matthew McConaughey character as there is in the relationship that she has with the Woody Harrelson character who she's married to. And I think that that relationship is perhaps a different kind of relationship from one that you've seen on this kind of uh, show or movie before. And I think that maybe is what puts the character in a different place rather than just if she were the, the wife watching her husband become a, a philanderer and becoming increasingly distant and, you know, you're not the man I married and all of that stuff. So I think I, I sort of liked her for the other side of the character more than just the traditional right down the middle aspect of it would be what I would say. That's fair. And one of the things I really like is, is the way that they've set this up. It's sort of the American Horror Story model where it's just these are eight episodes. We're going to tell the whole story in these episodes about these characters. McConaughey and Harrelson and Monaghan get to go back to the movies after that. Then we're going to start over if we're renewed with a whole new set of people. And hopefully they can draw even more talent like this. And I think that based on the early reviews, there, there's no way that HBO won't bring this back. And there's absolutely no question in your mind that this is a movie miniseries. I have no question that if HBO is submitting this, it's movie miniseries right down the middle that way you don't need to worry about Brian Cranston it's just let this one walk off to all the awards next year so so do we now have to start giving that pass to American Horror Story well we don't need to give that pass to American Horror Story because we don't like American Horror Story <laughs> Hypoc I, when have we ever had any problems with hypocrisy Alan okay that's fair that's totally fair but regardless true detective incredible absolutely set the season pass for it we are in agreement, and that is it for today's show. Alan, we don't know in what form we're coming back next week, but tell the kids some things to look forward to. Oh my god, there's so much stuff happening next week as well. We're going to have to talk about the Golden Globe results. We're going to have to talk about all the things that we're seeing and hearing at the TV Critics Press Tour. There's a bunch of new premieres as well, maybe not as many as this week, but Suburgatory is coming back. Sherlock is coming back. HBO's got a new comedy coming up called Looking. So lots to talk about. We may do it on a podcast. We may actually do a video show where we're sitting next to each other. That would be kind of strange. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on our blogs. Just follow hitfix.com. You will find out exactly where and when we will be discussing things. Until then, I'm Alan Seppenwall. I'm Dan Feinberg. See you in the next life, Jack. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit hitfix.com.